Don't you think humanity needs an upgrade? I think we do. We're at the cusp of the ability that we could be extinct. We're not going to because there's too many smart people that are moving us to transcendental mm -hmm. evolution where we are going to evolve as a species. When people say to me, how can you believe in AI? How can you believe in biotechnology? I'm like, listen. We can either embrace and become the stronger, become stronger as a species, or we can give in and let everything run us and live in fear and never upgrade. So I believe we are here to upgrade. You're listening to The Human Upgrade with Dave Asprey. You're listening to The Human Upgrade with Dave Asprey. I'm going through a voice upgrade right now. Actually, no, it is South by Southwest, and I've been talking a lot and maybe flew somewhere where there was really dry air, so I sound even more gravelly and uh, even cooler than normal. Maybe I'm channeling Morgan Freeman. What do you think? I think it sounds cool. I like it. All right. This is my new... <laughs> Let's go with it. <laughs> I, used, I used to smoke voice. But you guys have to deal with it because this is an interview not worth missing or to state it more positively, worth listening to because it is a live interview during South by Southwest, which means all the cool kids come into town, including Dr. Christina Rahm. She is a force. She's a well-known executive, a scientific researcher, an entrepreneur and author, and a former pharmaceutical stooge. Is that the right? I think that's the word. That's the right word. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Until she got cancer and Lyme disease, and decided screw this noise. And so she started uh, DRC Ventures, which works at solving root causes of diseases. She's looked at counseling psychology, nanotech, nutraceutical research, and just wrote a book called Cure the Cause. And we're gonna talk about what's really going on and some really cool stuff on mold and lime and getting inside the cells in your body and maybe even some other stuff that's off the beaten path of biohacking. But She's exceptionally legit. Uh, tons of patent pending technologies. So this is an OG biohacker. Christina, welcome. I'm honored to be here. Everyone knows who you are. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I get to be on this show. So thank you so much. You're so welcome. I, uh, I saw some of your talks online and said, you know, we need to connect. And uh, South by is such a great uh, opportunity. Just since so many people are in town, I'm like, why don't you swing by and thank you. make you some coffee and see what's going on. I love your coffee. <laughs> it was really good. Thank oh. you. But I, I, I like a lot of things that you've done because you've really helped our world be a better place. Oh, yeah. thank you. That, that means a lot, especially coming from you. I mean that. All right. You worked for Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, Bristol-Myers Squibb, and others. Which is the most evil? So, <laughs> I, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, I... You, I'm supposed to be honest on the show, right? Yes, but I have to be. If you have non-disparagement agreements, you can honor those. I, I, I do have, I do have yeah. those. Um, but I will say this. I enjoyed working with the pharmaceutical biotech industry. The higher I got in my career in those industries, in the science, uh, medical, and clinical side, the more um, personally, as a mother of four and a cancer and Lyme survivor, I was worried about side effects and the complete transparency of everything. So when you asked me what it was the most... Oh, wait, hold on. You used the word transparency? Mm -hmm. I thought you couldn't use that if you worked in pharma. It wasn't allowed. I, I, well, I'm not sure I'm supposed to, but I just did. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. Well, no wonder they had a problem there. You can't be transparent. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Well, you know, one of my specialties is data and statistically analyzing things. And uh, there's a lot of different ways you can statistically mm -hmm. analyze things. And if it doesn't work out the first time... <laughs> Mm. There's always different ways to approach it. But I think my Native American roots and my Middle Eastern roots, and I, I shared with you mm -hmm. uh, Cherokee, Choctaw, Middle East, I, I really understood the body needs things naturally. And there are synthetic things that are, are in pharmaceutical and biotech that long-term use, and I know you're very aware of this, causes issues to our genetics, epigenetics, DNA, which is hard for people to hear. But mm. we all know environmental triggers and factors cause a lot of what happens to us. So I have to say this, environmental triggers and factors are anything you put into your body or that goes into your body that can affect it and a lot of times negatively. So I think we have to remember that includes pharmaceutical and biotech as well if it has synthetics in it. It's interesting because I, I was of that mindset uh, for a long time and I was even maybe anti-pharma. And of course my questions are kind of coming. I'm, I'm anti-behavior of big pharma in the US today, but yeah. I actually 
I've found some pharmaceuticals could be really helpful. Absolutely. So, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not opposed to synthetic. I just want to know what they actually do. And then I want to pick my poison, whether it's a natural poison or an unnatural poison in the right dose with full knowledge. And, and it feels like there's been a suppression of the natural knowledge and they're hiding some things like what Tylenol does and for some your of these GI other things. And it's for ulcers. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that because I have to, I have to tell you, I feel like that's really one of my missions is to, to give a full understanding. Like when you read a package insert and mm -hmm. you were married to a doctor and you, you know this, you've studied this, it has the side effects, but I think people need to add up all the side, side effects so they're aware. Mm -hmm. You and I have a scientific background. We've studied this all our whole life. And I don't care if you go to school to study it or you do it on your own, but you and I have thrown our lives into this mission to really educate the world. And I use the word transparency because as long as we're honest with humanity and we tell them the truth and then they make the decision about what to put in their body, I'm all for it. Where I have a problem is let's not change the reality. Let's talk about the facts and then each person can make a decision. I mean, we debate whether people should do THC or whether they should do microdosing. Well, I think we need to really talk about the facts that everyone should know what they're putting in their body if it's prescribed as well. Yeah, it's one of those things. I go back to business school. I went to Wharton. And at the time, it was the only business school that didn't have ethics as a, as a course. And one of the classes, they just taught us, oh, it's provably cheaper to spend money to tell the world your product is good than it is to make a good product. Yeah. And one of the things that led me to create the biohacking movement and, um, and to launch Bulletproof, and by the way, guys, in case you haven't heard the news, I have nothing to do with Bulletproof. I'm not a shareholder. I'm not on the board of directors. I got nothing going on there. So whatever they're up to, I don't know. But um, I, I did launch that with the idea that people aren't dumb and we will talk and we will spend more money on products that are better and work better. And it doesn't cost that much more to do that. And my bet was that word of mouth, plus the fact that you can feel it working, is enough to overcome the effects of spending a lot of money on marketing that, that a big food company would do. And it did $650 million in revenue uh, under my leadership. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy thing in that we know people will do that if we're allowed to speak about things. And it's the suppression of thought and speech that's the issue right now. I said this, I did a talk yesterday at South by Southwest, a um, couple of talks, and I talked about the fact that, you know, we talk about traditional and non-traditional medicine and scientifically what we've learned and our advancements. And I'm just going to say this, go back hundreds of years and look what we knew. And now we've created this illusion that none of that was accurate. One of the things that I've started doing is I'm purchasing books on print again. Uh, and you'll notice around the house, there's thousands of books I've read. The reason for that is you can't go in and retroactively edit physical print books. Yeah. I have all of the books written by people in the 20s and 30s about the first big um, vaccine uh, marketing campaigns and how those worked. Mm -hmm. And... It's so interesting. The same thing happened back then that happened over the last three years. Mass psychosis followed by uh, an awareness and then, you know, a silencing. So at the end of all of this, I listened to these global leaders. And I mean, they served Bulletproof Coffee at, at WF for three years in a row. These guys were drinking butter and MCT for a reason because it makes yeah. their brain work better. Butter right. from cows. But... Oh, that was a great point. Did you bring that up to them? No, I... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe but, it wasn't the time. If I yeah. guess they weren't anti-cow, then I yeah. actually didn't go. It, it was a friend yeah. who brought it there. But the, I even have a picture of Bill Gates drinking Bulletproof coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, well, that was like, good advertising. Like, I, oh, <laughs> uh, oh. But do you want that? I don't mm, know. You know? Yeah. And there are 4% of people in studies are evil. They're psychopaths, right? They really are. And they're unnaturally drawn to politics. Uh, but the rest of us are generally some degree of good. There's some narcissists in there and whatever else. And we're all working on improving. Yeah. And what the psychopaths need to understand is that even though they don't like it, there are limits on what they are allowed to do. There are spiritual and energetic limits right. that are very firmly in place on them. But more importantly, I don't feel good when I eat grains and crickets. It makes me sick and it takes away my vitality. Yep. I feel good when I get enough meat. And I'm not going to be vegan. I already did that and made me really sick. I did so, too. You know, I tried it for, 
I had cancer. I had a brain mm-hmm. tumor, uh, pituitary, and then wow. I tried it for two years. Um, I kept. I ended up having to have an infusion because of my iron levels, and I kept yeah. getting sick. I just couldn't do it. It's a great way to depopulate the world. Yeah. It's a great way to make men not as strong. I'm oh sorry. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, <laughs> it, it makes women not as strong, too. Let's, I know. Let's not count that out. No, I'm not going to count it out, but it really frustrates me because you want to develop warriors. And I know you probably know this. You're O negative, O positive, which are your warrior blood types um, genetically. I mean, it, 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 you have to have it. You have to have me. Yeah, you do. As you age, your energy can decrease more and more over time. But it's possible to get more energy as you age instead of losing it. I'm using something that works really well to help me with sustained natural energy. And it's called Mitosynergy Biocopper One. It's a bioavailable form of copper. And it's super effective because Copper One is a critical component of your cell's natural source of energy production. Biocopper One also helps create critical proteins and enzymes your metabolism could not run without. It's clinically proven to help with mental clarity and to help your body feel good. And in some people, it even helps reduce or eliminate gray hair when it's caused by copper deficiency. Get 15% off now at mitosynergy.com slash Dave. I was at the Milken conference in, uh, I think it was in Abu Dhabi a few years ago. And there's this big panel on the global population problem. And and on plant-based diets. And I said, guys, I'm not worried about the global population diet because plant-based diets are making people infertile. And a couple of people, including a couple um, uh, members of important families there, started like, well, I have, I'm vegan, I have healthy kids. I'm like, yeah, look at their kids. Like, this is a multi-generational problem. And strangely, only one other person really agreed against the Frankenfoods, and it was a guy from Del Monte who makes you know real foods, even though they're pretty processed. Yeah. So we have these things going on behind the scenes, and we don't know it until you hit a wall. In my case, I had multiple exposures to toxic mold. Um, I was diagnosed with uh, Lyme disease, and I actually started one of the first at-home lab testing companies in the U.S. When was that? Do you mind me asking? 2008. The only ones I know of that were direct-to-consumer before that was Life Extension. And this was, all we did was the MELISA diagnostics test, which you might have heard of. It was spun out of Big Pharma because one of the researchers there named Vera, she, um, she proved that the excipients, the binders and fillers, were causing all the side effects from one of the drugs. And the technology she developed to do that saved the drug from being canceled. She's right. like, pull out the crap, and then the drug works. Yeah. So because of that, they gave her the technology, and we could diagnose active Lyme versus just you've been exposed Lyme. I had Lyme, and I think it was, Lyme is mostly a symptom of toxic mold exposure, uh, and that's based on a UCLA research, um, yeah. some genetic stuff. But whichever one I had, I had both. And I had all the chronic fatigue syndrome, the weight gain, the 300 pounds, wow. the arthritis, um, high risk of stroke I had and heart the attack, heavy metals. Way, yeah. You had all this too, right? I did. I actually, I, listen, I, when people say Lyme disease isn't real, I lost my memory. Like I really could not oh, yeah. even, I was in the hospital in the ICU. Like I could not remember anything. But mm-hmm. so for me, it's a very real thing. And it's something that is hard to deal with. And it's a lifetime, I say this, of making sure that you're healthy after you go through things like that. I, um, I bought disability insurance. But I love your lab. Like, oh, I have to say that. Labs, yeah. I, I invited you to Nashville. You've already been there, I know. But I, would lo- I really love that because we have so many people that I work with throughout the world that have suffered from Lyme disease. I mean, it's a major thing people are well, dealing with. Check this out. So Upgrade Labs is opening a location in Nashville, Tennessee. And we're opening 27 locations and counting. By the way, guys, own an upgradelabs.com. And what, what's happening at labs is really cool. Today, if you have a, a leaky faucet or you want to replace your toilet, you go to Home Depot, yep. go to Lowe's, and you pick up some stuff and you do it yourself. Medicine isn't that different no. with AI. So what we're doing is Upgrade Labs is not a medical company, not in any way, shape, or form. You come in there and we use AI and we use medical grade imaging and diagnostic stuff, but it's not a we're not diagnosing or treating anything. We're just telling you how to improve the quality of your life. And you use our interventional technologies, biohacking stuff none of which is medical, but some of which could be if you wanted to use yeah. it that way. And magically, if as a side effect of getting healthier, something like diabetes or some other thing just goes away, like the, those side effects are unintended. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right? But the idea is you're in charge of yourself. You always were. And Absolutely. we're just using tech and humans to give you the right guidance on what technologies to use, what supplements to take. I'm and when so, to call your doctor. I love I love this lab. I love the fact that you're doing that because I told you I've worked in 89 countries and I really want to say this. I, I've done different projects for people all of a sudden, right? The side effect, you're right. They don't have diabetes. Their insulin levels, everything that the test that you're doing with cholesterol, they get better. And it's simply because they're focusing on their life. And I do believe I'm just going to. So I don't know if you know this about me. But since I was in my late twenties, I've studied fungus. Oh and yeah, so we're mold people. Love it. I mean, I have no. All the books from the seventies on <laughs> mycology and my collection here. Yeah. Look up Rex and Rinaldi. Uh, they were two of the top researchers. I've actually uh, got to experience because at the time I was at Pfizer, they launched Iflucan, which is fluconazole. I actually like that stuff. I actually like that stuff too. Oh my gosh, we're going to be friends. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Sporadox uh, is a bit better, but I'll, I'll take yeah, the one. Yeah, I will too. Like I actually carry that when I travel. Anyway, I the, too. Like we're totally like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the they had like mushrooms growing out of people's heads in a surgery. They would open people up in the autopsy and there would be fungus and mold. They now understand that with Alzheimer's and dementia, that when they're looking at the brain and they do autopsies, when it's acute, they're seeing fungus and they're seeing parasites throughout the brain. So I this has been something I've been talking about. 50% of the people that die in a hospital actually didn't die from bacteria or viruses, but from the fungus that proliferates throughout the body. Doctors weren't treating it, and that's still an issue today. Even with a virus, you mm -hmm. get a virus, bacteria, they're treating you. Well, the fungus is growing. You don't get better. I'm sorry, I just got on my... That's my huge thing, and I well, feel like no one talks about it. <laughs> I, I sure do. Um, being a, a toxic mold guy, I actually did a documentary called moldymovie.com. It's free. You guys can just go see it. Um, I spent about... Oh, six months, um, we traveled around, interviewed 12 doctors, very credible people, and 12 normal people were just wrecked by mold in their environment. Oh, yeah. And anyone who sees that, like, oh, my spouse isn't crazy. And if your doctor sees it, then oh, you're not crazy. But a I lot of doctors of don't gaslight. recognize it. Did you know that? Oh, yeah, most of them don't know anything I mean, about they know literally, when you talk to doctors, they're like, what are you talking about? And I try to educate my friends. Yeah. And they were like, well, I, go, I went to my doctor, and he didn't say you're crazy. He just said that that's not really a thing. I go, it's, it's not just a thing. <laughs> It's like one of the yeah. main causes for autoimmune. But what's interesting is like your lab and different things I feel like I've worked on in my career and you've worked on can help with fungus and mold and yeah. help the human body where all of a sudden you're like, I'm better. And I know you know this, but when doctors diagnose someone, that's their analysis, right, of that person. And I'm not talking bad. Doctors have gone to school for a long time. They're amazing people. But your body is your responsibility. And most doctors no, have not been trained on that. It's, not, it's your government's responsibility to take care of your body. Christina, well, I have you read the memos? Jeez. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine those people who believe that? I think they do. Yeah. Weird mind programming. Yeah. Do you think that it's actually a government fungus that's programming their minds? Could be. <laughs> I mean, I, no, I'm being honest. Like, if I'm, you know, I did a book. I have to give you the book. It's on military science. And I had 900 pages in the book cut it down to 200 because I studied strategic sciences and then was involved in some projects that had to do with biological oh, yeah. development because we do it in every country. Like that's when people say it's in this one country. I'm like, no, this is part of the military because you have to protect your country. I understand both like, sides. <laughs> oh, sorry. I know I'm, you're supposed to. And so here's what I, so they didn't take out. I had a chapter that had to do with different things that have occurred in the last four years and different things we could do naturally. Didn't have anything about the products I have, just things mm -hmm. you could do naturally and launched it at the Kennedy Center. And I've already had comments about how could I put that in the book. I talk about peacetime during why we need peacetime. I talk about psychological warfare. I talk about biological, but they were like, how could you put that in the book? And I'm like, I didn't say anything wrong. I just talked about the reality of what occurs in our world. And I feel like people should know and be educated. And my question is, why And that, why is anyone upset about that? Like, we have to educate people. And also, when people get outraged because someone is wrong, dude, you've already been programmed. Here's the way normal, healthy humans are. Someone says something, you don't agree. You're going, oh, that's interesting. I don't agree. Why do you think that? And then you have rational discourse and maybe you learn something or maybe you decide the other person's wrong. And then you go out and eat some ribeye and you're cool with it. 
And the fact it, well, that it's people, like if we argue, like I would love yeah. to argue with you someday. No, no, please right. don't, you'll, please you'll don't. lose. Don't even. Make, I'm gonna okay. lose. I know, but I'm I want. Just but that's how you learn if you yeah. disagree, and somehow we've lost that ability to even have these discussions. Um, my favorite, just the other day for on International Women's Day, I did a post about how hormonal birth control is a crime against women because it is. Yeah. And it's really harming women's health. And in fact, it's also harming men's health. Yeah. Because when women are on birth control, it changes your hormones, it changes our hormones. Absolutely. It, it screws all of humanity up. 100%. And there's always this one shrill voice, usually with blue hair, and I'm saying, how dare you as a man? And I'm like, last I heard, men and women could talk to each other and about yeah. each other and we'd help each other. Um, so the cool thing is, I learned this, four to seven percent psychopaths they're online too. So when you get those people who just come in and they act that way, I'm like, block, block, block. And all the people who like the post, block. And it's only like 15 people. And then suddenly rational discourse returns in the comments. It's just a few creepy loud voices. We don't have to listen. Okay, th thank you. Because I had a really rough week the last week. Um, yeah. The criticism is hard sometimes. Oh, okay. Can I just give you the master class on that? I, Joe yeah. Rogan tried Can to cancel please? me for 18 months straight. I had thousands of trolls come into my website. Um, they were financially targeted because of a competitive thing. And How did you deal with that? Oh, man, it, it rocked my boat. I had to do some neuroscience-based um, forgiveness work and just understand that it was pushing my buttons because it was it's bullying. And so if you're bullied in school or by a parent or a coach or anyone, the way you felt when you were a kid yeah. is the way you feel online. This is why right. trolling hurts. But when you heal the originating trauma, try EMDR, come to my 40 years of Zen neuroscience thing, um, whatever your healing thing is, you don't worry about what's happening now. You worry about the first time you felt that way. And it's always when you were a little kid. That's when you true. do that, you learn two things. Number one, the more they talk about you, the more reach you have. Number two, the more they talk about you, the more people will buy your stuff. And number three, if someone came into your living room and said that, what would you do? If they were, the, some of the stuff that people said to me, I yeah. would ask them to leave. Exactly, so yeah. did you ask them to leave your page? Well, recently I had, I did a, a talk on immunizations and vaccines, which is, I would, so I talked about the first vaccinations actually, and of course you will understand this because we both have, I just know you'll, under, you'll understand this. Knowledge, yeah. I'm talking about herd immunity and i'm talking about the original vaccines were in india and china when they naturally exposed people to um, people that were sick so that they would naturally do this right i, I love it when like you should be canceled oh yeah and i hear that a lot you know what i usually respond yeah. when I, I go so should your mom yeah right and, and they're both <laughs> juvenile stupid seventh grade behavior <laughs> and if we're gonna go there like let's go there like you know you're a poopy face like like what are we gonna do here or we could have rational conversations but Someone who's calling for that kind of stuff with you, they're not there to learn. They're not there to help. They're not there to do anything but feed their ego and to what, deal with that, whatever bullying they experienced that made them into an adult bully. So there's nothing there for you. So what you do is you kick them out of your living room and you just say, okay, um, it took you two minutes to make up whatever nonsense you did about me. And it took me or even someone on my team exactly one second That's exactly to click hard. block. Yeah. Right. And then they're gone. People will throw the word superfood around like it means something and they'll apply it to almost anything. I'm waiting to see superfood kibble for humans. But there are real superfoods. And there's one that I've been researching for years with so many health benefits. You almost wouldn't believe it. I first started using it for gut health, and then I figured out that it supports metabolism, hair growth, healthy skin, immunity, and even athletic performance. I'm talking about colostrum. Colostrum is the first nutrition we receive in life and has all the essential nutrients that your body needs to thrive and grow. And to get those nutrients, it's important to properly source your colostrum. And that's why I use Armra Colostrum. Armra is a bovine colostrum concentrate that's natural, sustainable, and third-party tested for purity and efficacy. Most colostrums that you might find are heat pasteurized, which depletes nutrients and changes proteins. Armra's process preserves the integrity of 400 bioactive nutrients. It's also been shown to have the highest potency and bioavailability of any colostrum on the market. Since I started taking Armra colostrum, I've noticed a difference in my energy, my fitness, uh, my skin, my gut, especially when I travel. 
And I like it that I can take one or two or three scoops and I could just take it in my mouth or I can drink it with water and it tastes mild and it really does change the state of my body. It's a potent anti-aging substance. Go to tryarmra.com, T-R-Y-A-R-M-R-A.com. Use code Dave. They'll give you a 15% off your first order. People are talking about this a lot online. I've been a fan of colostrum for years. I just couldn't find one that consistently worked. Armra really makes me happy because it does. You wouldn't know about the cell danger response, right? Yeah, absolutely. You expose someone to a lot of toxins or specifically yeah. infectious agents like lime or mold yep. in their environment all the time. Your cells, which are the root of consciousness, at least in my work, they just learn that the world's a hostile place. So oh, yeah. you will be more reactionary at a subcellular level all the way up to your brain. Absolutely. And you'll think it's stuff around you and it's inside you. And you can actually heal that, but it requires a healthy terrain to do it. Yeah. Does that make sense in a- your Absolutely. And actually natural killer cells come in with the response. You're inflamed. Everything starts happening like you're at war. And mm-hmm. then you're angry and you, you reach. And I believe, just like you believe, our cells they are we have a city inside right they're talking mm-hmm. that's who we are we all think this is who we are but you have this whole environment and if it becomes honestly angry mm-hmm. or inflamed or toxic or has mold right this environmental oh, yeah. trigger then you do become almost a person that you shouldn't be and i believe you can come, become like a zombie and i really do so this is when when the whole pandemic happened i started doing talks and you probably haven't seen them but i'll tell you they were about fungus and wow. my big concern was not the virus which had been around since the 1600s my big concern it was fungus and because parasites of people being locked in houses or what because when you have a viral or bacterial infection, the fungus grows throughout the body because you're, you're, you basically, your body, you know this, we're the host. Yep. Our cells are the city, like we're in here, but it's trying to take over anything. And I always say we're stronger. We can be, mutate if we think with our heads and if we use our minds, our spirits and our souls to really make decisions instead of listening to the noise that people are trying to get us to listen to. If we actually can help our bodies, we can we can fight things right effectively. But here's the problem. When a virus takes over a bacteria, then fungus gets this opportunity because you're focused on the bacteria or the virus and it's smart. It thinks. So it starts growing because the goal is to take over the body. So I talked about this in 2000, and I did a lot of talks on it in 2019, 2020. And then the the show came out, This Is Us, or The Last of Us. And everyone around me was like, Christina, were you part of that? I go, no, but I just understand what can happen in the human bodies because the cells – they just become confused and they let this stuff grow. And yeah. I know that sounds odd to people, but it's so real to me because I've studied for so long. I have this fascination and love with the inside of our body, you know, from a oh, scientific perspective. Yeah. And so I just want to share with people so they can help their own world, you know, that they're living in. They're in control if they'll take it. There are hundreds of examples of fungus or sometimes other microbes like toxoplasmosis, controlling mammals, controlling fish, controlling all kinds of higher life forms. Uh, For instance, in one study, a certain kind of fish that had a worm would 90% of the infected fish would go to the surface and glimmer and get eaten by birds. And the other fish that were uninfected stayed at the bottom and didn't get eaten. Right. So the parasites were making it happen. Then there's rats that lose their fear of cats. Right. Right. Because they have a certain infection that wants to spread. The idea that we're somehow immune from that is nonsense. And it's ridiculous. The crazy cat lady is toxoplasmosis. Yeah. Right? It's a thing. And you can look. In fact, people right now are starting to call for me to be canceled because I said something against cats. And I will just tell you, cats are great. Just keep them outdoors where they can catch mice. But don't let them indoors or they'll give you toxoplasmosis, especially if you're pregnant. It's just the data. Unless your cats always live indoors. And for God's sake, don't make them vegan if you do that. So right. I like cats, but I'm just aware. 100% right. Um, cats and birds. I'm just going to say that. Yeah. Like, and, and a lot of the reptiles, they have they carry it. And then your kids will get it. Toxoplasmosis, interesting. They can in a, in a different mutated format. Okay. And so can like... Um, so can roses. You know, we share the DNA. Roses? The thorn on the rose, yeah. Oh, my gosh, that's cool. Yeah. So we share DNA, different parts of DNA, our DNA with like a plant, right, and different things. But what we don't understand is also bacteria and fungus um, viruses do too. So you've got to understand there's a 
I call it transcendental communication between all of these things that can happen. We don't want to accept that. We want to mm. think, well, we're immune to this and that's not going to happen. I'm glad you're educating people on cats because I actually have a cat that has always been inside, never outside. The parents were never outside. And I feel fairly safe because yeah. of that. But I will tell you, um, I also treat periodically my travel you know to the middle east asia all over the world nigeria i mean i i treat myself for that i actually got um fungus and parasites in ukraine one time and ended up in the hospital there so i've had a lot of issues with it all right i've got a good question for you so i i ate some sushi um, at a grocery store which is not my normal thing um, i don't mind sushi on occasion i take stuff to kill parasites whatever but I ate this stuff because, I don't know, my schedule was aligned where I'm like, I probably should eat today because I'm on stage all the time. Uh, and then that night I had a, a dream, like a really clear dream of like worms growing. I don't have dreams like that. And it was clearly my body telling me I got yeah. a person. I had symptoms the next day. Um, so I you know, took some herbal stuff and I was, and I took some finbendazole, yep. uh, which is only for dogs, except it reverses cancer, a lot of types of cancer in humans. Yeah. You can take, Why don't we talk about that? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know about that, by so, the way. Yeah, yeah. you would. Yeah. And so does that other stuff for, that sheep get. What's this stuff called? Well, I mean, I don't know. I take ivermectin. and. <laughs> by the way, I am a sheep farmer. So we had ivermectin because we give it to the sheep. Do you understand? That's where everyone has. So why yeah, in the world? It's a standard thing for worms. Why yeah. in the world would, would individuals think that this is what we give animals for parasites and worms, but we would never have parasites and worms, and why would we take sure. that? And by the way, my friends and the doctors that I've worked with and the healthcare scientists over in Africa that have taken ivermectin and some of the other products that you and I know about, they didn't have as hard of a time during all these things that happened throughout our world because they were treating, whereas here, you know, it was illegal to do certain things. So I love it that we're, we haven't got to heavy metals and autism. We're going to get there. Um, but we got to talk a little bit more about parasites. Uh, probably five, six years ago, I had some salad in Phoenix, a very dangerous thing to do. Next day, and I don't know the right words, but I, I will say 20 times a day, disaster pants kind yeah. of scenario. And so, <laughs> so I just hit you, huh? <laughs> you wish you had a diaper, but you didn't. Exactly. I shouldn't say that. I don't mean it like that. I just know no, I've had, I there, would travel the, with what I've done, yeah, I've had those days. There were times yeah. when I'm thinking, man, I, I see why diapers are useful here. <laughs> Uh, and, and it was life disrupting. I had this for eight months. I oh, had wow. three different stool tests from big labs. I went to a, a good friend who's a GI doc. Uh, I took herbs from Africa. Nothing worked. And I was kind of getting desperate. And someone said, you got to go see this old guy. His office is by Central Park in New York City. And I go into his office and I'm blanking on his name. It's Irish guy. One of the more interesting humans I've met and probably still practicing. And he... Spent half his time with the Maharishi Foundation, working on global peace, had a great ancient book collection. And he said, oh, I ran public health for New York State for six years. And he said, modern doctors, they don't know anything about parasites. He said, I wrote six textbooks on tropical infectious diseases. So bend over. I said, what do you mean? He goes, you think a good parasite is going to come out? No. So I bent over, and fortunately, cameras are very small these days. Yeah. And he says, yeah, there it is, 10 inches inside, there's an inflamed patch. Call me in two hours, I'll tell you what you got. And he looks on a microscope, and I had um, long-standing giardia, uh, which probably wasn't the cause of the symptoms. Yeah. But I had another amoeba, whose name I'm forgetting, that will punch its way through your um, gut wall and then move into your brain and make cysts. Yep. And uh, I don't remember its name, you probably know the one I'm talking about. I, I, don't, I don't know. Okay. I'm, I'm just but, trying to think. I, I do know. I just can't remember right now. Once, yeah. once he could find what they were, he said, here's, take these drugs. And I was fine in six days. You know, there's a link between that. And I'm not telling people what to think or believe mm -hmm. or going against a doctor. I can't because, well, you know why. <laughs> um, but there's a link to that in multiple sclerosis as well. Because oh, in yeah. the imaging, they aren't able, they don't come, you don't come out and they don't say to you, you've got a parasite or you've got fungus. You can look at it in an autopsy, but it's just not something that, that doctors have been educated on or that they even know how to look at it scans. So yeah. instead they come in and they say, I think you have MS, there's a hole, there's holes and there's plaques on the brain. And uh, that's what we think it is. And the issue is, that's not always what it is. And then you're treated yeah. the rest of your life for something that you could have had alternative, what I call traditional medicine, but we call alternative. Um, you could have had that. And so that's amazing. That particular doctor that ran public health, though, mm -hmm. he probably had a hard Kevin. time. 
to that. I want to meet him now. Yeah. <laughs> Just search for Parasite Doc New York City. Yeah. yeah, and he probably, while he did that, though, in New York didn't come out with all of that because it's hard to be in politics or to be in a position and come out with something that is not normally accepted by everyone else, especially right now in our in our world. Yeah, politics sort of ruins science in a major way. Yeah. And it, it's funny, you're talking about brains and those things that form. A meaningful percentage of brain lesions are from calcium oxalate yep. from people eating these weird plant-based diets yep. and i was a raw vegan i was a vegan and do you know how upset people get with me that i'm not a vegan you like know, the audience well, i have of course i know because vegans Why? are upset by wind blowing it doesn't matter it's because they're malnourished, malnourished well, I'm, people I'm, my mental health doesn't work when i'm a no, vegan mine no. either yeah so if or you're physical. a vegan and this triggered you eat a steak or get a therapist and the therapist will tell you to eat a steak it's just how it is it's okay and if there are no steaks available then eat a politician because they're not doing their job right. Okay, there we go. Don't be vegan. I'm so glad you said that. That's one of the biggest criticisms I get. And the people lose their minds over it. And I'm like, why are you upset with me that I don't eat the same way that you eat? Why are you upset with me that I'm telling you scientifically what your body needs? You can also be like, why are you upset with me when you're the one who's super unhealthy and fat and has shakes and has dark circles under your eyes and autoimmunity and joint pain and kidney stones and all the other things that people get from going vegan why 80 percent of people stop being vegan in the first year and then it takes several years to get healthy if they ever that do does. one of those so like the, the fact that any politician can look you in the eye and say be vegan for the environment be vegan for your health or be vegan for the animals it means the politician's bad at math or bad at science or just bad boom oh, that was a good i like that <laughs> wow i don't know where that came from get me all fired up so, so those brain lesions, you look at parasites, yeah. you look at excessive plant-based toxins, um, and then you can- Fungus too. Yeah, there's yeah. the next one. Even sac formations of cancer. Mm -hmm. What percentage of cancer do you think is a fungal infection? So I, I, just, spoke, I just spoke yesterday about 30% to 50% of all cancers misdiagnosed, just so you yeah. know. I think up to 70% is my 70? answer. I do. Wow, you're the highest I've ever I met. I think it's a fungal component. I believe it's feeding it. I yeah. really do. And I think that we are, and why we are not stating that and talking about it, I don't know. There's been research on it for years. I know you know that. Um, but I believe there's a huge link, just like I believe. So I've worked on some products now to block sugar and to help with insulin levels and diabetes because I, the sugar, and I know you know this, it feeds the fungus and the mold and carbs because of the sugar can do that too. So you just want to have a healthy balance, but I believe it's a major problem, not just with cancer, but with autoimmune disorders. And I think it's a trigger with the epigenetics. Now, there are some forms of cancer that can eat meat. Yep. And some that can eat fat and some that feed on ketones. Yes. Why are we picking on carbs? I pick on carbs because I think carbs, when they are, when, when you break down the, the carbs, and, and believe me, I eat carbs. I'm just talking about unhealthy carbs. Mm -hmm. So there's certain types of carbs because of the GMOs and because of how they've been exposed to pesticides. It's, it's like saying, I did work in Chernobyl. So let me give you an example. When the nuclear bomb went off, we went in, we cleaned it. We Wait, hold on. The bomb didn't go off there. No, the I'm sorry, the reactor. Sorry. <laughs> when all that was of, Hiroshima, totally different. That was Hiroshima, which I've studied a lot too, but I've done a lot yeah. of work in Ukraine and Russia. So okay. um, going in and even being on the land and seeing the plants like roses that have been impacted by the chemicals. Do that they have were, superpowers? Well, they look very different, and okay. they're, very, um, they're not as pretty. Uh, they don't smell the same. They have a Weird. lot of thorns. It's really odd. It's like a, um, it's like you put something in a microwave and it exploded, but it used to be a flower. You know, it's very wow. different. So to see that in person was really transformative to me as a, per I, I literally, as a scientist and then really digging into the literature and understanding GMOs because my, my postgraduate um, certification was from Harvard. It was three years in nanobiotechnology. And I, people get this all wrong. I went to study how to reverse some of the things that we've done in this earth. It was really important to me. And so understanding that carbs are one of the main carriers of some things that are very toxic to people and the environment is what bothers me. If I lived in, let's take Cyprus, which they've never had pesticides and GMOs, mm -hmm. it's a different conversation that we're having. But I don't live there. And so here in the United States, we have been, I don't think 
I don't know if people understand this. We're worried about Hiroshima. We're worried about Ukraine because of what happened. But what about us and what we've been exposed to and what we're eating every day? Uh, you know, people have a hard time quantifying risk because our brains are so reactive. Um, one of the people out there is, is worried about deuterium, you know, heavy water. So I, I looked into this about eight, nine years ago. And um, heavy hydrogen, um, it, it's bad for your mitochondria, unquestionably. It's 160 yeah. parts per million in the South. But getting it out of your diet and your water it costs excessive, like, like $20,000, $30,000 a year and an obsessive way of living. And then every carb you eat has it anyway, and half the meat does too. So it's, it's one of those things where is it worth pouring all of your time and energy into this thing only if you're a billionaire with cancer? Otherwise, focus on things you can easily change that move the needle a lot. Yeah. So it's prioritization of detoxing that matters. Yeah. What are the worst toxins that people should pay attention to right now? Okay, I want to say something really quick before I answer that, if you don't mind. Did sure. you know that I launched a product with Nat and Kirsten in Europe? Oh, cool. I get a, for mitochondria, telomeres, I get uh, regulatory compliance. You know, when you're, every country is different. Yeah, Europe's Germany's weird. the hardest. Yep. Um, and so I uh, get these comments back that mitochondria is not a real thing. Um, I just have to say this because this was like, blow, it blew my mind that oh my I God. couldn't use mitochondria on the label because scientifically we weren't sure really what mitochondria even do and what it is, if it even exists. I'm like, what? <laughs> Did you just respond and say government oversight of science is not a real thing and just period? I just, I had to tell you that because I, as a scientist, I was blown away wow. by the whole communication and I have to be careful because we're, it, Germany's our largest market. Would, but it Would was, it be legal to respond and say if mitochondria are not a, a real thing here's a compound that stops mitochondrial respiration called cyanide since they don't exist would you like to try the compound yeah that's a <laughs> maybe i shouldn't do that though <laughs> yeah i guess you shouldn't actually send them the compound i'm just like give them the formula or something yeah, like guys yeah. put your money where your mouth is or yeah. get out of government you're yeah. holding humanity back and i don't care what country you're in you don't own my health you don't own my listeners health you don't own anyone's health except your own and if you don't look like a shining beacon of health then get the hell out seriously um who's that lady who runs health in germany she looks like job of the hut yeah i i know who you're talking about because it's horrible. i have i met her a couple of years ago she so, used yeah. to stand up and say guys i'm unhealthy because of these five things and i'm working on them i don't care where you are i was fat i was really sick you just come clean say look I'm working on it. I don't know what's going to work. I'm trying this. I'm trying that. I'm on the path of improving myself. But instead, you sit there and say, you will eat crickets. No. The answer is no. Yeah. yeah. No. But it's healthy for you. That's the comment. You know, you, <laughs> I've can, had to hear you, so can, you can have mine. <laughs> That's what I said. Yeah. I was in a, it was so interesting. I was in Europe. I was actually in Switzerland and I had the conversation and I said, well, you're welcome to have mine because for me, it's not my superfood. <laughs> this I, I, is not a superfood for really me. You're really I usually say, if I eat that, I'm just going to fill the room with noxious gas and we're all going to have to go somewhere yeah. else. Do you really want me to do that? Yeah. Like you, there's, it, the time to be polite has passed. They but, sent me flour, by the way. Did huh? you know that? Cricket flour. Oh, man. <laughs> you didn't get that gift. <laughs> I, some, someone sent me uh, cricket bars like eight, nine years ago. And I gave them to my kids and they spit them out like, what is this? This is horrible. So sorry, kids. Oh. Yeah, it wasn't good for me either. I, by the way, I, I looked at what's in them. I looked at the, I'm like, maybe this is good. I, I'm not actually opposed to technology and food that makes healthier food. So the type of fat, similar to seed oils. Yep. They have a huge parasitic burden. The type of protein is low quality. They typically trigger allergies and they have a lot of carbs and not that much protein. My, my biggest thing is that they they really do have a parasitic attachment. I mean, huge. they do. And people don't understand that. And then you don't know, there's no regulation on it. And then you look at it and to me, it's just not the healthiest option. So why would I be putting this in my body when there's so many better options for my health. And that's that's how I feel. So, But I've had so many people. I had a book that was sent to me about crickets. I had many people ask me to eat crickets. I've, I've tasted so, them, by the way, twice. And I'm like, I'm sorry. This makes me feel horrible. Can we be a little Buddhist about things for a minute? Crickets Absolutely. are alive, too. They didn't come here to be a food source for humans. So you, how many thousands of lives are you going to take to eat your stupid cricket bar in the name of carbon? It's dumb. It, it's actually anti-life. So right now, there are some food technologies I want to run past you that I'm interested in. Uh, one of them, I, I'm, I'm an advisor and investor, it's called Zero Acre Farms. 
These guys are using uh, fermentation. It is a genetically modified organization, that, or, or organization, organism that does it. And they're taking sugarcane and turning it into oleic oil, monounsaturated oil. Okay. 100% pure. And it costs 25% as much as soybean or canola oil. And it's a stable frying oil that's much healthier for people than polyunsaturates. Right. It's called zero acre farms because you don't need almost any farmland. You can replace millions of acres of corn and soy and glyphosate with smaller things because we've made it more efficient. And I'd rather have beef tallow from grass fed cows myself. But would I eat that? Yes. Would I rather give that to any human versus seed oils? I would. And it's biotech. Is yeah. that a good thing or a bad thing? So I am a biotechnologist. Good. Like it's so hard. So when people ask me and, and, I just, just so you know, I do get bullied about that as well, um, because you, of my. You can back- stop being bullied. You're gonna be bullied if, if you if you consent to being bullied. Just no, make fun I of know. your moms. It's so easy. I, I, all bullies lose it when you just say your mom. It's you two words. It solves all bullying. Okay, now I'm gonna use that. I and seriously <laughs> do it all the time. And you're like, how dare that you? That makes them so mad. Are you so, that's gonna make people so mad. But what? you're blocking but them, the right? Ma- but the matter they are, the more in charge you are. Okay, so I am a biotechnologist. It's two words. Your mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My seventh grade since you I'm going to say your mom, and they're going to be like, what are you talking you about? Dave Asprey says your mom. <laughs> there you go. Guys, stop bullying. It's dumb. All right, keep going. Uh, so I am a biotechnologist. I, I studied in the United States and internationally. And just so everyone knows, yes, other countries have education. <laughs> Yes, there are shaman and scientists and different people that do understand yeah. different aspects of science that we don't. And I just... <laughs> Did you say that shamanism was scientific? My great-grandmother was a shaman. Of course she was. <laughs> no, the, the, And you know what? what? I don't think she went to college. <laughs> Well, but I I've, think she was extremely yeah, smart, yeah. and I think that, yes, there's different types of science, is my answer. Yeah. And I, I, I'm going to stick to that till the day I die. Well, you, you should, because it's scientific. I mean, I, I've also done shamanic training. I'm not a shaman. Yeah. Uh, and I've worked with people who trained for eight-plus years with the Shabibo people, yeah. South American shamanism versus North American shamanism. And I've worked with North American shamans, too. These people know stuff. And on top of that... At the biohacking conference that I'm putting on at the end of May, beginning of June in Dallas, by the way, guys, biohackingconference.com, Joe Dispenza is giving a talk. He's not going to lead people in breath work, which you go to a Joe Dispenza retreat for, which are awesome. He's actually going to talk about all of the science behind what he does. When I say science, EEG brainwaves, gut biome, mitochondrial performance. Mitochondrial. The the head researcher (laughs) from UC San Diego who studies mitochondrial biology will be there. And he's the one who does the research for Joe Dispenza. Thousands and thousands of people showing that meditation and breath work has an effect stronger than pharmaceuticals. This is all shamanic realm stuff. So when someone says shamanism isn't science, the person who's saying that isn't scientific. No, and you know, when I was in school, the higher I went up, the more classes I took, the more education, the more I got criticized for my spiritual belief as well, for how I believe in this... um, the fact that spiritually it's so important scientifically to our health. As did well. you curse the people who did that? I actually, I, I can't even. You're <laughs> listen. I was told that there's only I'm sorry, I'm just a that maker. they were God. Is what I was told. Translate surgeon. He said, "You, I am God, so you don't need oh, to believe." Surgeons, man, those <laughs> egos. So. I, I literally I a surgeons who are good friends. But I, just I have, I have okay. surgeons that are yeah. good friends too. This particular individual did not like my belief. Mm-hmm. Um, that's fine. We disagreed. I gave my answer to what I still believe because my first background was psychology, right? Masters right. and first doctorate, and then I went into scientifically. I'm like you. It's been a life journey for me. Sure. And a lot of that's probably because both of us have gone through things personally. Oh, yeah. And this was our mission. Getting right? real sick will do that to you. Yeah, but I was going to tell you so. Um, I've studied biotechnology and I've worked on great projects. Like 20 years ago, I was involved in projects for some of the top companies that I got to, I was there and I I got to experience things that have to do with cloning, things that have to do with bioprinting. Because, you know, you can bioprint your whole body. What's a bioprint? Like curling photography kind of stuff? Yeah, it is. So you basically take the tissue and then you're developing the whole arm. You can actually, they they have the technology to do the human brain. Uh, you, you could even make are, the brain. bio photons that come off of your cells that are now measurable with yeah. quantified things. Of the, right. Some of the stuff happening right now in quantum biology it's and cancer and bio photons, unbelievable Unbelievable. Research. It's real. Yeah. It's real. You can actually make a brain where it's never uh, unhappy, where you always have the ability for, to be 
happy and peaceful, but there's an ethical debate. I'm sure you know that with all of this. Like, how far do we go? Why what is there should any we debate do? about it? Don't you think humanity needs an upgrade? I think we do. Well, that's the mission statement for all my companies is to upgrade humanity. I, I just had this discussion. I was asked by a moderator, and actually, Ted, not he was just trying to you know ask me questions in front of the group, if I believed we were going for extinction or if we were going for evolution and going to a higher, higher level of who we are. And I said, we're... We're, we're at the cusp of the ability that we could be extinct. We're not going to because there's too many smart people that are moving us to transcendental, I, I mean this, mm-hmm. evolution, where we are going to evolve as a species. When people say to me, how can you believe in AI? How can you believe in biotechnology? I'm like, listen, we can either embrace and become the stronger, become stronger as a species, or we can give in and let everything run us and live in fear and never upgrade. So I believe we are here to upgrade. And part of that is biotechnology and bioscience engineering. Part of it is we are we do have to modify sometimes genetics. We just need to do it in the right way because we have to protect who we are. And that means we do have innovative technology that can help us do that. So closing our minds to that and acting like every scientist that has spent their life trying to focus on it is bad is ridiculous. So, you, you 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 have bad scientists. You know this. Mm-hmm. You have bad politicians. You have good scientists. You have good politicians. It's a little. It's rare, <laughs> but you do. You have great people in this world, and I just I'm so glad. I this is my first experience to really spend time talking to you, and I'm so glad that. There are other people out there that don't think that everything is horrible just because it's misunderstood. You've got millions of listeners right now who are on the same boat. It's a huge tribe of us. In fact, it's at least half the country not listening to this show. Um, give me time. Um, but just who are on board with that at one level or another. And it's, um, it, it's interesting how the bullies, they're so loud. And like, for example, you, you see like this high school kid who's like, I'm going to skip class because I'm angry and complain about it and make the cover of Time magazine. Right. The complainers are loud and they're a small number of people. And there's this really cool technology that I helped to invent. It's called STFU. And uh, do you know what that stands for? No, I don't. That's only funny. It stands for shut the F up. Um, <laughs> He's like, I thought it was a scientific term. I'm like, <laughs> Like, I slid that in so smooth. Did you say, and I'm like, no, I don't know. And I felt stupid. And then you're like. <laughs> so bottom line is when there's a bully trying to shout you down for being wrong, you can be wrong. The only thing I care about is let me speak the truth. And I have control over my own biology. And if you try to stop me, you are an enemy of humanity. And I feel the same way. People accuse me of being on both sides. I'm like, listen. No, I am for yep. freedom of speech. I think we should be able to have it. And I also believe I'm in control of mm-hmm. my body and I should be able to make decisions for myself yeah. instead of having someone else do it for me. And I think crazy and wrong people, even vegans, should have a right to say whatever they want. I agree. Right? I agree. By I way, don't care. Vegans if they aren't say- all crazy. Most of them are just misinformed. But anyway, yeah, I, I have too. very good friends that are vegans. Yeah, me too. I, I tease them mostly. And they tease me too. Right? Uh, by it's, the it's way, okay. we go to dinner and I'm always te- I'm like, you know, you're not going to live on that stuff. <laughs> yeah. And because if you can laugh. And what I just said, you're healthy and you're a vegan. Good yeah. for you, man. And if uh, you got really triggered, eat food that makes you untriggerable. Uh, and vice versa, if I get mad that someone on my team eats French fries or is a vegan, I have an issue. It's yeah. not their issue. It's mine. So all my employees, when they first turn, oh, my God, what do you eat around Dave? I'm like, eat what you want. Like, That's what I always tell everyone. My business. I go places and they're like, well, Christina only eats this. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's not me. Yeah. I mean, like some days I eat things that I have to tell you, I'm like you. If I eat sushi, I'm a little worried. Yep. I love sushi, but I'm like, great. I have to now take ivermectin, mm-hmm. maybe fluconazole. By the way, my go-to for um, antibiotics, which most people don't believe in antibiotics, I do, uh, Zithromax. You know, so, there's a case for Zithromax. Do you do it like every year just yeah. for shits and giggles? I do. How'd you know that? How do you think I knew that? I don't know, but that's what I do. You know how I do that. Yeah, it's important for me. <laughs> I just want to clean out my body, and I want to yeah. be as healthy as possible. I feel right. ble- I feel thankful that I understand science, and I have these decisions. And what I want is for which I think your show is doing this is give people the option, and so they understand both sides of it. Did you just say trust the science? I think I heard you say that. Yeah, trust the science. You sound like Fauci. Okay, I'm not like Fauci. Well, he said trust the science. Who am I supposed to believe? Mm, he worked at Bruce Meyer Squibb like I did, I think. <laughs> so here's the deal. Um, guys, I don't want you to trust the science. I want you to look at the science. 
And if you're saying, I don't have the skills to do that, then I want you to trust the person who did the science and look at them. And the way your nervous system works is when you look at anything in the first tiny little window, your intuition knows your body has wisdom and it's just going to be a tiny little blip. And right after that comes an emotional response to it. And then right after that comes your thinking about it. And then you're going to make up a story about the emotion and you've taught yourself since you were a little kid because you're human and you live in society to ignore the intuition. You know right away whether Christina has integrity and is authentic or not. Yeah. And so if you don't know how to do all the science, you actually can pick a person and say, I give them greater than 50% likelihood of being right. And I also promise you 100% Christina's wrong about something and so am I. But we're way more right than most people. We're trying. Yeah, so <laughs> both of us are yeah. doing a good job of... And we're, we're authentic. Yeah, and yeah. We're, we're pulling together lots of knowledge and yeah. lots of other sources using our own trust algorithms to come up with knowledge that's digestible. So I want to ask you so many questions that I, I don't think I'm allowed you, to, you am I? questions. Why okay, not? so do you believe... So, you know, I was studying quantum physics and... and Biotechnology, bioscience engineering, nanotechnology mm -hmm. is really the transfer of energy. You're using different energy levels, even sound, like you're using polarization, magnets, a lot of things to transfer things. So I remember being in school because I'm older, and I remember studying the black hole theory and string theory, which was a theory, and now it's reality, right? So my question is, do you think that there's other universes, other worlds that, and my and do you think that you came from one of them? Or you don't believe in that? <laughs> Has anyone asked you that or am I allowed to ask? <laughs> you can ask me. I mean, now we're going into like really esoteric. Um, actually, there's a lot of, I've studied with different lineages around the world. Like, like uh, the place where the where Shaolin emerged was a single temple um, in China. And I, I've learned from one of the, the nine living grandmasters of that lineage, um, direct from Lao Tzu. And the training with South American shamanism and you know, uh, some of the, the stuff in India and just lots of esoteric yeah. things. Um, when you go into certain altered states, you don't need drugs for these. You can do it with neurofeedback. I run a company that does neurofeedback with four patents in neuroscience. That's and so awesome. I, six months of my life in altered states with electrodes on yeah. my head. Bottom line is there is a view of reality. Um, that includes all those things. And it's not shared by just one lineage. If you study ancient belief systems, they all had similar views of this. Yeah. And if you take a new person who just learns how to enter altered states, there's a guy in Portugal, and I believe the 1920s, if I'm remembering right, he could leave his body, do astral travel. This stuff is real. Um, you can learn how to do it. I learned when I was 20. And when you, when you do that, he said, well, I can, I can teach people to do it. Why don't I just teach 100 people how to astral travel? Don't tell them anything. Say, go out and do this every night for a long time. Write down what you see, and let's make a map. Right. And he looks at what does everyone see who didn't talk to each other? Maybe that's real. And a meaningful percentage of people in China, more than 10% are colorblind. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, if you're one of those people and someone comes in and says, I can see that this is red and blue, and you can't, which one of you is crazy? Neither one. Neither one. That's why I don't know why people get so... Um, my, my grandmother, Merritt, was really big into reincarnation and to the things we're talking about. And she's one of the smartest women. She's no longer alive that I've ever met. And she taught me some of this stuff when we were mm -hmm. alone and talking, which became threatening, I think, to certain people in, in specific religions and things like that. Why is this a topic that people are... Um, get upset about <laughs> like why can't we just oh. talk and and because you're you're right i've been exposed to different things like you have i have opened my mind to understand um there's different perceptions and realities and and i can't tell someone else what to believe but why is it a topic that everyone's upset about as a scientist i love to explore that because i want to know why we're not supposed to talk about mm. it people are triggered because they've been programmed to be triggered by churches by the school system, which was mostly designed by Rockefeller. And when you go back in history, um, so you end up going, oh, anything that challenges my worldview makes me feel like I'm unsafe, therefore I have to fight. It's one of the flaws in, it's one of the flaws in humans that we need to overcome. And it's probably actually a genetic issue, I would imagine. It could be a brain, like a lower level brain structure issue, but it's a hackable one. Yeah. And if someone disagrees with you, you're still safe. Yeah. But for some reason, our identity feels threatened. So all that stuff, 
as a computer science guy who was raised as an atheist, uh, and I, in my undergrad, I was one class away from having a minor in religious studies because I didn't understand why anyone would believe in that crap. I mean, I was like actively setting out to disprove it. I just realized that the body is quantum, and I can prove that beyond a reasonable doubt. We, we now, just in the last couple of years, a study came out. Every time your heart beats, the proton spin of everything in your brain changes at the same time when your heart beats. That means it's a quantum system because yep. there's no lag time there and they're all doing it in synchrony. So we can prove there's quantum effects in the human body and that we're based on that. Quantum stuff includes yes, no, and maybe. So you are simultaneously a rational being and an irrational being. Yeah, and they can both true. sit in there at the same time and neither one is right or wrong. And people would say that's non-dual. Okay, fine, it's non-dual. No, I, I think that's absolutely yeah. accurate. It, it is. And all this stuff about past lives, and no, I don't believe any of that. I have seen my past lives. I have come out of altered states without any drugs uh, and apologized to someone for something many lives ago, and immediately she just bursts out in tears and remembers yeah. everything. And uh, the countless examples of this to the point that if you have studied this stuff and you've done enough esoteric work and you've cleaned out enough of your own garbage, you'll know when you meet someone you've known before. It's just how the world works. Absolutely. Right? And the cells, the cells connect. Yeah. Like people get yeah. thrown off by how am I so connected to this individual? And my, my comment is because your cells know each other. I, hopefully. No, but, I believe that. I, be, I really believe that because the cells talk, and we we do understand that there are certain individuals that mm. are evolved enough um, that they know when they walk in a room if they recognize someone or there's been some connection because there's this this imprinting that occurs. This is my belief. Yeah. This is just my belief. I know a lot of people will disagree with me, but I, I know like we have machines that I've been in school, I've, I've worked on projects where they can basically know what happened to you when you were two years old. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about it? Did you have a cat? Did you like the cat? What color was the cat? And we can use different devices now. They're very expensive to do that, but there are certain human beings that are so evolved and they've stayed, they've gotten connected and they've spent time really understanding this connection with their cells. And they know when they walk in a room, just like the CIA and the FBI would use it, without training, there are certain individuals that know how to do this. And I think it's a great gift, and people should work towards that. Uh, it, it is. Uh, one of my friends uh, was the top scoring recruit for remote viewing yeah. um, that one of the three-letter agencies tried to recruit. She said no. Um, to doing it, but it was just like a natural gift. It wasn't something that was trained. Yeah. And if you're sitting here saying, I've never heard of that, or I can't do it, therefore it doesn't exist. There are writings thousands of years old that describe this. They're called the yogic cities. And there is great evidence that anyone who meditates almost for any kind of meditation yeah. develops at least some of these abilities where all of a sudden it's not random. You can more than 50% of the time predict a coin flip. It's not going to be a hundred percent of the time, but there are effects and our bodies are designed to filter out your ability to see those things. And the, the thing that your body does before you can think about anything in about a third of a second, this is called um, P300D or evoked potential. So it's the lag time between when your body feels something and when your brain knows that it felt something, it's a third of a second. You can't see it, but it's there in cats. It's, 10% of that speed. So cats can move like crazy fast because they have a much lower lag time on reality than humans. So what's happening during that third of a second? Our body is deciding what to show us and what not to show us. Exactly. Yeah. And that means if you could make your body waste a lot less energy on stupid triggers, like someone thought something different than you, and if you could replace that with just awareness, well, a couple of things happen. One is your window on reality becomes younger. So my brain's response time is that of an 18 year old. It's about 240 milliseconds, not 350 milliseconds, like it should be for my age. And advanced meditators exhibit that as well. But that also means that your mitochondrial networks, which are the first observer of quantum reality, each mitochondria has its own consciousness. It's a bacteria. It's not a very good consciousness, but it's one. Well, they're going to program or they're going to find what they're programmed to find. So when you do the meditation, when you do those things, they will find those things. And if you believe the quantum stuff, they will collapse probability into reality, the way that we know Schrodinger's cat and the quantum slit experiment and all those things do. 
So in my work, it's just reprogramming a network of billions or even trillions of ancient microbes that are running your reality to do what you want instead of what they want. And that's behind all shamanism, all esoteric practice, all expanded consciousness states. They can see the world. They're super fast. They're just yeah. super dumb. Yeah. And when you go into the altered states, you get a view of the world that they have. I, you know what? I have to say, you just brought up something that I know your audience probably knows, but I, we will, our audience, and, and there's a lot of international presence, will watch cool. this as well. So this will be great. I try to explain this to people. This is, you'll understand this. There's good and bad bacteria. <laughs> There's good and bad fungus. Uh, you ask about the toxins early on, uh, earlier on, what comes into the body. And the truth is, some of that is um, genetically determined because some people's genetics, and honestly, in their cellular health, can use something negative and transform it into something positive. Yep. And when you talked about the mitochondria and the microbes and what's happening, that's one of the abilities we have. But my, to myself inside, what I think is, how do we change that to be even better? How do we make everything friendly? Knowing, knowing that you get upgrades in your system though, if you fight battles of certain types from a health perspective, because your cells can become stronger. And I feel like that's not something people talk about at Are all. Are you saying that some of the childhood diseases that 99.99% of kids survive confer strength benefits later in life? 100%, it upgrades the system. How dare you cite hundreds of studies that show that to be true. That's not allowed. It's a fact. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Don't you feel dirty citing facts like that just right here in public? I get criticized, but you tell me not to worry about it anymore. I mean, so I'm I just practice it. Use those two words. I mean, come on. Your mom. Yes. <laughs> your mother. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're listening to what is this, your mom stuff, I learned this from my son in seventh grade. You probably had it in seventh grade too if you're from America. So someone says something stupid, you're like, yeah, your mom, because it's such an inane, meaningless comment that when someone treats you with one and you just double down on inane meaninglessness, it takes it to the realm of laughability. So thank you. You can use that anytime you want. Well, I, I even use this kind of as an analogy. I'm going to be saying your mom a lot. <laughs> I, I use People will immediately say, how dare you? That wasn't very conscious of you. And you know what the answer to that is? Your no. mom. <laughs> That's what your mom said. Just keep saying it. Eventually they go away. Well, what if they say your mom <laughs> I'm like, my mom's going to fight your mom. <laughs> that, yeah, my mom can kick your mom's butt. I mean, that's, that's right. It's like, and flick a booger on you. Like, literally, this, this is bullying from fifth grade. Yeah. So if, if you're one of those trolls, you're probably not listening to the show because I've triggered you too much. But if you want to come to my webpage and troll me, two things will happen. One, I'm going to make fun of you. I'm going to laugh my butt off. Uh, and two, if you're just an asshole, I'll just ban you. Like, why are we doing this? And yeah. so that, that sense of, like, just be unfuckwithable. Yeah. Well, mm. I'm going to tell you right now, there's lots of research that shows you do upgrade going yeah. through viruses, bacteria, fungus. And also we're born into this world with this environment. We do have to live with this in our bodies. Mm -hmm. And what I think is so great about people that do focus on meditation and prayer, and there's different, there's different types of um, feedback, biofeedback, neural feedback that are so good for individuals. I've been involved in that for years, by oh, the really? way. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Did you know that uh, my background basically as a business person, but I also did this as a scientist when I worked in biotech and pharma, I started companies um, in neural feedback, uh, neural really? monitoring. Yeah, back wow. when it wasn't popular. And I wrote articles really focused on it because I got involved with, I had the pituitary tumor and syringomyelia. So I was worried about surgery. And at the time, there were only a few surgeons in the United States that would use this as a device to wow. make sure they knew what, what, what happened during a brain or spine surgery. So I, it became my mission at, on many levels to really educate people. That's crazy. I had so many surgeons say, well, I don't make mistakes. And I'm, wow. <laughs> and I'm like, well. We have so many common knowledge. <laughs> I got my first EEG machine in 1999. Wow. And I, so I, was I launched my clinic 11 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, they have it in so many areas now. You know, you put it in the probes when they go into surgery. And mm -hmm. I know you probably know about interoperative monitoring. We even had it throughout Johns Hopkins hospitals. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. So I, and I did research at the pain clinic there. Um, really involved in that's another conversation. Hopefully we can have someday. Well, get, get this um, Upgrade Labs, my biohacking center company. It's a, the franchise I mentioned earlier. It includes brain upgrades using the EEG gear that I invented that no one else has access to. So you That's come in and do amazing. a half hour brain upgrade as part of your upgrade for the day. 
And to make this affordable and accessible, it's like many hours of meditation in a half hour. I'm really positive on the, just the effect it can have on the world. That's amazing. I really need to get back into doing more for, for my body to continue what, what we're all doing together. But um, it was a, a passion of mine from 2000, 2001 until 2015 when wow. I sold off the rest of it. It's kind of okay. like what you yeah. – and, and I stayed involved for 10 years after the acquisition, but it was – you know how it is when you get – stop when you step out of a company, after a while they don't really want your they're, ideas as much. They're like kids. Um, they go off to college, and it's okay. Yeah, yeah right. it's I mean, fine. It's but, I, but the fact that you have this at this lab, I can't wait till you open it so I can go and – and have it done. Mid-April in Austin, we're opening, and we've got... Uh, Nashville, though. What about Nashville? Nashville's coming. I don't have a date for Nashville. They're, I think they're still looking for a lease. And we've got Utah open, Idaho open, uh, and uh, we're looking for a franchisee in L.A. right now. Uh, and there's... Oh, and Seattle's coming. What about uh, South Carolina? Uh, oh, I think we have a Charlottesville, either in the pipeline. Yeah. I want to talk to you about that, because we... I mean, 27's a lot, and there's a lot more coming as yeah, well. So. Yeah. But it's, guys, go to ownandupgradelabs.com and looking for people who want to become a biohacking facility owner and be an entrepreneur and show you how to do it. That's awesome. Well, I have one more thing I want to ask you about. So you make a nanotech skin coating, um, which is called Envirum Skin Defense. Mm -hmm. So I read the ingredients, and because I'm working on my voice, I just sprayed it in my, uh, in my mouth. Was that, am I going to die? No, I actually, um, so it's for the skin, but I actually worked on that um, during the pandemic. I'd worked, worked on HOCL and lots of silver and lots of isotopes and like really trying to help mm -hmm. with the lungs and act, a part of a group, I did an emergency authorization. Unfortunately, we had 100% success in the lungs, but the government really didn't approve a lot except for the shots. And so um, we did not get approval. I went in and started working on a nutraceutical version, which was extremely hard. I wanted it to be very um, beneficial to the body in a positive way and added a lot of the other ingredients that I've worked on throughout my career mm -hmm. that I understood would help with not just things like viruses, parasites, and fungus and bacteria. I wanted something that would also help in case of a uh, nuclear war. So I don't know if you know this, but some of the patents that I hold are to get rid of nuclear waste. Uh, in the land, air, and water, and in people. I actually have a format, which someday maybe we can work on a project together that's for like an IV. Can you get rid of cesium, even if it's not radioactive? Yes. We gotta talk. Yeah. So I wasn't gonna go there, uh, but I had to go to Tokyo a year after uh, Fukushima. Yeah. And there were radioactive hotspots there. Absolutely. So I'm like, well, what could I do here? Why don't I take some non-radioactive uh, cesium? Um, which is not an irrational thing to do. It's not, no. Uh, but my body does not clear cesium. So years later, I still have high cesium levels. Well, because some, some people won't clear it. Yeah, my body... That's the like, issue. That doesn't... That's not good. And too high of cesium can disrupt uh, potassium in cell membranes. It's not yep. good for you. And my levels aren't that high, but they're, you know, in the red zone on yeah. heavy metal tests. And nothing I've found will clear cesium. You should try this, although, again, this is for the skin. <laughs> And if you ask me, why did you launch it for the skin? You can detox through the skin, right? Yeah, that's what I do. Because sometimes um, people don't want things to be nutraceutical, and I want it available for everyone in the world. Yeah. Yeah, I totally understand um, how we have to put things on labels. But, but you know your skin's your largest organ. I know you know this. It's like true. when people say, well, I put it on the skin, but I don't want to put it in my mouth. I'm like, well, actually, it's transdermal. <laughs> like I it's going to. I think that's a self-limiting belief. Your consciousness is your largest organ. Oh, that's a great point. I totally just made that up. But but I, I like it. That's my oppositional defiant disorder. Am I going to bring that up now? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I thought of what to say to that that surgeon goes, I am God. You're like, yeah. that's so cool because I created the universe that you're in. And, and then they're like, <sighs> and then they're going to try to one-up you. And then it comes right into your mom territory. It's three steps away. So it is. I was, I was take, in I my thirties. Ludicrousness <laughs> down to ludicrousness. So yeah, yeah. I uh, I have fun with that. I got to ask you though. I'm on the war path against things that lower testosterone in men because yeah. when I was 26, I had lower testosterone than my mom in lab tests, and I've been on testosterone therapy to keep my levels healthy for a young man ever since, yeah. other than three years of experimentation. Um, and I know fragrances are bad for you; they disrupt um, testosterone. This is why anyone. Well, anyone, but especially anyone under 30, 
man or woman, you don't have enough testosterone to be a functioning human being right now if you live in a typical environment. Fragrances are a major part of it. You have fragrance in here. What is up with this fragrance versus all the other chemicals? I use natural and okay. I use the isolates. Um, and I don't, people get confused when I say isolates. Mm -hmm. um, I take the compounds out so that that's one of the things biotechnology so, teaches you to do. So is this like extracted from lavender or something? Yes. Okay, got it. So yeah. you should say like I should plant based or although plant based doesn't mean much because sarin nerve gas is plant based. Yeah. yeah. So but yeah, when people see fragrance, my audience knows, you know, red alert, like don't put that stuff in your house. There's no yeah. late air fresh and all that garbage in here. I should be clear about that then. Yeah, uh, yeah any fr any fragrance, anything that I've utilized in any of my products comes from actually um, usually the root or the seeds where I take the oils out and I okay. utilize it. So one of the things you get to do when you're a nanobiotechnologist or bioscience engineer is be able to deliver that through a formulation as a catalyst. So not only is that used to help get out throughout the body, but it also is used in a positive way. Just like with the vitamins and minerals I work on, I detox okay. those. It's just part of the process. I really think that's what my, you know, we all have different things that are our expertise. I think. That's really where I have focused a lot is not just the human body, but plants, uh, animals, and the land, air, and water. I really have focused a lot on it in my career. Um, I have a hundred, I'm in the process of filing a hundred more di additional patents. I just got three approved. Wow. I'm working really hard for humanity, just like you are. I don't have all the answers. Like I'm, one of the things I've noticed is that what I believed 10 years ago it changes with the more I read. I'm like you, I'm an avid reader. I yep. speed read, I read through as much as I can. I learn when I sit and I, I listen. I don't just, it's it's not flippant to me. I think every second I'm here yeah. is an opportunity to learn. And that means you have to be at, at full energy to yeah. be able to take advantage of every second. Absolutely. And if you're just completely like humbled and doled and low energy by your diet, including your media diet and all the crap people yeah. are trying to feed you, even if you want to do it, you don't have what it takes to do it. So you manage your energy and your time, and then you can make all this stuff happen. So thanks for for continuing to do that. It's it's not an easy thing to do, but it's worthy. I spend a lot of time, just like you do and that you have, uh, meditating at least a couple hours a day. Wow. When I go to bed, I pray, I meditate. I really believe in a higher consciousness a higher being and i i um do that for an hour at least every night sometimes wow. two and in the morning before I, my feet ever hit the floor and i have to say this if you ask me well then it cuts down on your amount of sleep no mm -hmm. it energizes me like i'm literally in a state where i'm i know what's going on but i see this white light mm -hmm. and i follow that and i really pray for people i meet for the people on the journey that i believe are here with with me to do what we need to do. So not that I have the answers to everything, but that's that's how I energize myself. People who know how to look, and just if they look in your eyes, you can tell. You can see someone who does that come to practice because you'll look different and you just have to be open to paying attention to it. Yeah, you do. Congrats on the work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me in your world because you have so many people I know that um, look up to you and want to be in this world, and it's an honor to be able oh. to spend time with you. I actually... I have to say this, I was a little bit, um, not nervous, but just like, well, I wonder how we're going to get along. And it was a really enjoyable interview. I really, I really connect with the things that you say and your beliefs. And thank you for your mom. You did <laughs> for teaching me your mom. <laughs> I was about I mean, for, to, for giving me the strength on that. No, I actually love it because you don't probably don't know this, but I don't want to be mean to people. But if I say that, it's like I'm telling them, yeah. like. And I'm going to be using your name now. <laughs> you, you totally can. I mean, and, and here's the thing, right? There are people who be triggered. Yeah. And here's the thing. In fifth, sixth, seventh grade, that was a thing that would make people really mad. You can't make fun of my mom. My mom is perfect. You're like, so you're going to take them back to that. And that's right where they're coming from. Yeah, because that's how they... It's funny. And when you do it, because, you know, you're a woman and, you know, you're respectful. This isn't about disrespecting women. This is about no. disrespecting bullies. No. And yeah. so I love that. And, you know... Um, it's not mean spirited. And some people, you you're know, not the, mean spirited. The uber meditative people, like, well, you know, don't speak ill of others. I didn't. I just said your mom. That's it. I didn't say your mom's uh, like they went on South Park. That's not the vibe. No. Right? It's literally just let's go back to grade school. And so I do it, and people criticize me occasionally for that. And again, so is your mom. Done. I'll so, take that criticism. All right. I'll and, like it. And if you're really offended, how dare he do that? And Dave doesn't like women. <laughs> Well, don't tell my girlfriend. So there you go. 
All right. That said, Dr. Christina Rahm, R-A-H-M.com. Thanks for being on the show. It's really, really fun. The fact you're combining really deep science and just spiritual awareness to make something good happen in the world, keep it up. Thank you. I enjoyed it. I really did. Thank you so much. You're listening to The Human Upgrade with Dave Asprey. 